Every day, they pass me by. I can see it in their eyes. Empty people filled with care, headed who knows where. The Bible says in the book of Romans, it's the Lord Jesus Christ who can fill that void. Romans 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may be abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. The second stanza says, On they go through private pain, living fear to fear. Laughter hides their silent cries. Only Jesus hears. Marami tayong nakakasalubong sa daan, makakilala man natin o hindi, they may have that laughter or their smile, but there's always that pain, fear inside the heart of a man, of a person that only Jesus Christ can feel, that only Jesus Christ can feel that void. In Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, the Bible says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will help ye, yea. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will uphold thee in the right hand of my righteousness. People need the Lord. Napakaganda po ng kanta po na yan from the time na yan ay una kong narinig hanggang sa ngayon. One of the may, uh, favorite uh, songs ng mga maraming Kristiyano because of the truthfulness of the message of that song. Minsan binibigyan natin ng criteria yung enjoyment o yung pagalakan by uh, the material and the physical things and Time to time, madali natin agad ma-determine or ma-judge uh, ma ng isang tao ay okay lamang because of the external appearance. When we see the laughter, when we see the smiles in their faces, but the truth of the matter is without the Lord Jesus Christ, wala ang tunay na hope, wala ang tunay na peace sa isang tao. I Know it, you know it, all Christians know it, at lahat ng tao alam yun. Deep inside our, the, the very fabrics of our heart is that voidness, kakulangan that only Jesus Christ can feel. So it is the message of the gospel. It is the message of the cross. And that is the love of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Walang ibang pagkukunan none other than through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we continue in our series entitled Maturity, Christian Maturity or Growth. Today we entitled our message Growing Through Trials. I know that ito ay parang mga uh, repetition na nating mga messages na naririnig both here in this pulpit or even in other pulpits or sa mga Bible study, or sa mga devotion natin. But bear in mind that there is an important decision for every Christian on how to respond, kung paano natin titignan, kung paano natin ipamumuhay yung ating Christian life, knowing that this word trial, yung mga kaganapan nito sa ating mga buhay, ay part. It's part of our Christian life, not to be ignored, not to set aside. The wise response is always to embrace it. Isama po natin doon sa araw-araw nating buhay that there are trials along the way. And in fact, this is one of those means of our God in maturing His people, His children. Isa to doon sa indication that we are growing in our faith. Doon sa ating tamang response sa mga trials na dumarating sa ating buhay. We are partakers, we are witnesses when it comes to the testimony of many faithful men and women before us. Even yung mga disciples in embrace trials and persecution. And we have it. It's documented in our Bible. And they made a tremendous impact in their lifetime. 
all for the glory of our God. And mind you, they are now comforted doon po sa piling ng ating Panginoong Jesus. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And so, as we continue, we will read 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 to 14. Kung kayo po ay nasa inyong mga tahanan right now, may I invite you to please stand up as we give reverence to the reading of God's Word. Sabayan nyo na lamang po ko sa inyong mga mata as we start reading 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 to 14. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, the fellowship and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, our teacher, the one who is teaching us all truths and righteousness, we thank you once again that we can freely read your word. We can sing songs to you. Thank you once again for the message of the song. Thank you for our choir, O oh God. People need the Lord indeed. We may see smiles and laughter in their eyes, but the truth of the matter in the deepest fabric of every man's heart, kung wala po ang Panginoong Jesus, there is always that void that only the Lord Jesus Christ can fill. Thank you for so sweet salvation that we have. Thank you that we have fellowship with you, O God, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that that void in our heart is already filled. And may we be at that channel, our lips be used so that that message can be also a message of hope and peace and love to others, especially our friends and loved ones who are not yet saved. May you be glorified in our midst. May you challenge once again Christians today as we continue to study basic truths from your word on how, on why, and the purpose. Bakit namin kailangan lumago sa aming pumpananampalataya, O God? Thank you, O Father. May you use your preacher today. Use my lips once again to proclaim thy truth. This we ask and pray, asking for your forgiveness sa aming pong mga kasalanan in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may all be seated. Growing through trials. But again, before we start, let's just... Uh, 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 look back doon sa ating first two Fridays. Our first Friday is entitled, What We Need to Know to Grow. Four points ang ating natutunan. It's about feeding ourselves. Ano ang ating i-intake? For the purpose of us growing, okay? Of course, it entails food. That's only one means just like a physical body. A babe, meaning yung bagong sanggol, isa lamang ang kanyang kailangan for him or her to grow, and that is the milk. And later on, start things siyang mag-eat ng mga solid food. That's for the physical body. Every living thing, may it be plants or animal, they need, animals, they need food. And so do we in our spiritual need as well. We need food for our spirit. And we recognize that there are two sources of food. Yung pong mga junk food of this world, okay, at yung mismong pure and holy, and yung may spiritual nutrients, none other than the pure word of God. We meditate, we have our devotion, we bombarded, okay, we populate our mind and our eyes and our ears in hearing preaching sermons daily, reading our Bible, praying, memorizing verses. Yun po ang kailangan. Walang ibang kaparaanan. There's no other alternative source for our spiritual maturity than other than the pure Word of God. And also, 
we need to know how to feed ourselves. Sabi ko nga, we have to discipline ourselves in our devotion time. In our free time, we ought to listen to Christian music. We ought to listen to biblical preaching. We now understand also the purpose of God appointing men and women to mature as fellow believers through the church. He appointed preachers, evangelists, pastors to edify, to mature believers. So, alam din natin dapat. Ano po, maybe it's sometimes, it's most of the time, it's painful hearing admonition from fellow believers, from fellow Christians because of our pride. But, it is also God's means on how we to feed us through our pastor, through preachers, through fellow brethren, especially those who are already mature in the faith. And also, one of the indications is we must know how to reproduce. God demands, the Lord Jesus Christ demands fruit. We share we witness, we bring others. Noong wala pa po yung mga pandemic na ito, face-to-face -face ang mga gathering ng mga churches, we bring them to church. We disciple them. But right now, we are trying to make some ways on how to continue the ministry, on how to win souls, and later on, discipling them. We are part of a church who love the mission work of God. That through our prayers, through our generous giving, nakakarating yung ating mga mission offering doon sa mga gawain ng mga missionaries all over the world. And so we fulfill the Great Commission as well. We witness sa ating Judea, sa ating Jerusalem, sa ating Samaria, and also to the other most part of the world. Asama tayo to the community. We belong to the community of Christians who love souls. When we look at that, parang napakasimple po talaga lamang ng parang nung mandate o nung komisyon ng Panginoon sa atin. It becomes difficult because we are still in the flesh. Paatras ang gusto ng flesh ang spirit natin wants to move forward in fulfilling and obeying our God. And, but the good news is that we recognize that. Alam na natin. Kung kaya may remedy ang ating salita ng Diyos, ang ating Panginoon through His Word, we ought to crucify our self, our flesh, so that we can follow the leading of the Spirit. So what we need to know to grow? With ourselves, with the right food, Okay, tapon natin yung mga junk food of the world that will uh, poison, pollute our minds. But feed our spirit with the spiritual nutrients coming from the pure word of God. We allow others to feed us. We know how to walk and we also reproduce as a living organism. Okay, But last week, we talked about identification of mature Christians. We answer the question, how mature Christians identified, identify with Christ's suffering. So, yung mga sufferings, and ngayon din, pag titignan natin, pag-aaralan natin about trials, trials and sufferings in life, how do we look at it? What do the suffering of Christ means to us? Knowing that it is our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered first for us. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And so when we continuously remind ourselves of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us, the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ, did it, it does it cause us to forsake sin? That is the challenge last week. And how mature Christians are identified by the world, our Response, okay, we are still in the world. We are not, uh, uh, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Thus, the world sees you as a Christian bearing or hawak-hawak natin yung light of the gospel. Are we the source of light that the Lord Jesus Christ asked us to be? In John 8, 12, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall no walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. 
we are the light of the world. Okay? So we are not hiding our light. Pinapakita po natin yun sa buong mundo. So that they may know that we have Jesus Christ as our source of that light na nakikita nila sa atin. We are not preaching perfection here. We made mistakes. We also commit sins. But there is an overwhelming, okay, overwhelming challenge to every Christian. Ipamuhay po natin yung gospel. Let our, sh our light shine before men, the Lord Jesus Christ says. And lastly, how mature Christians identify with each other, the context of which is in the area of forgiveness. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, And above all things have pure charity among yourselves, for charity or love shall cover the multitude of sins. We have that illustration between the Lord Jesus Christ and Peter asking, How many times will I forgive my brother? Will it be 70 times? The, the, the Lord Jesus Christ answers 70 times 7. Pertaining to uh, unlimited forgiveness that we ought to give to our brethren in the faith. That's the measure of true love for a brethren, lalo na po dun sa area natin ng pagpapatawad. In fact, the Bible says, we forgive others because we also need forgiveness from the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are, we can say, indications, um, helpmate natin on how we can pursue growth. Okay? In the area of feeding ourselves, in the area of relationship, yung last week na tinignan natin, identifying ourselves, understanding the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ, and what's the impact of that to us, on how we uh, identify ourselves doon sa system ng mundo, are we in the world or are, 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 are or, and of the world, or are we separating, sanctifying ourselves from the principalities of the world, and how are we identified with each other as fellow Christians, especially in the area of forgiveness? Maraming aspects para pumakita natin talaga yung ating pong maturity in the faith. But God is gracious. He is long-suffering. He is patient. He who had begun a good work in you will fulfill it, perform it, do it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Habang may hininga tayo sa ating uh, mga bibig, God is not finished with us. So if God is patient with us, are we patient with others? Are we patient with our loved ones, with our spouse, with our children, with our parents, and our brethren in the faith? So this week, we, talk, we will talk about simply trials as also one of the means of God to mature us, okay? To grow our faith, to strengthen us. It is God's it's also God's instruments, one of, the, one of God's instruments for growth. Okay, and there is a sequence, just like a physical uh, body or uh, life ng isang in, uh, a human being or isang living thing. And the Christian life or yung spiritual life natin, it begins with spiritual birth. Okay, in John chapter 3, verses 3 to 5, ito yung illustration ng Panginoon to Nicodemus who cannot actually, who cannot comprehend, hindi niya actually maintindihan yung spiritual birth na ito. Jesus answered, answered and said unto him in John chapter 3, verses 3 to 5, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In verse 4, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born where he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And in verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In the, in, on part of Nicodemus, okay, I do believe that Itong mga panahon na to, ng mga oras na to, he's not yet saved. I don't have any, I will not dwell on that whether Nicodemus or saved or not. Okay? Hindi yun ang pag-uusapan natin. But, isa lamang itong illustration that ang isang common man, o yung hindi pa po saved, never can understand the truth of this book. And the deepest, deepest truths coming from the Word of God, the Bible. 
The Bible cannot be understood by a common man. Yung common man na sinabi ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 pertains to an unsaved person. Okay? It's just a sidetrack para makita po natin. Minsan, we are trying parang our best to to argue with somebody in the areas of doctrine of Christianity and then we end up Going back to our places, to our home, prostrated, discouraged because we cannot seem to have an agreement or hindi natin mapa-oo yung ating kausap eh because they are not yet saved and yet ang approach natin sometimes is wrong. Okay? Until that person is saved, the Holy Spirit dwelling in that person, then and only then that the pure word of God can be understood. Hindi madali and slowly there's a process as well. And it is one of the illustration in the life of Nicodemus. He cannot understand what the, what, what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling him as an illustration. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man or common man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. What does this verse tell us as Christians now maturing in the faith, as witnesses for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Uunahin natin palagi sa isang natural man, sa isang common one, ang gospel of salvation. Palagi po yun ang approach natin. The person has to be saved first. So, immediately, ang atin pong palaging assumption sa isang tao, kaibigan natin, or new encounter, is that they are not yet saved. They need to be saved. And so, a mature Christian, okay, tayo rin po, the approach is simple. Present first the gospel and that person receive Jesus Christ as his or her Lord and Savior, the Bible says immediately the Holy Spirit will be upon that person, will dwell in that person. At yun yung sabi sa John 16, 13, How be it when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. That's the secret. We can never know and we can never understand it by ourselves even if you, are, you belong to the top 10 with the highest IQ level. It is only the spirit of truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall he that he shall that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Let me repeat, John sixteen thirteen. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And He will show you things to come. Therefore, you cannot expect as well maturity to an unsaved person. Okay? Maturity is for a saved person. So that's God's plan. Okay? That's the sequence. Birth in our spiritual birth. Why? Because before we are dead in our trespasses, but He hath you quickened in the Spirit. Then, Unti-unti na yung ating growth and unti-unti na yung ating maturity. God uses His Word. God uses the Bible. God uses the church. God uses the pastor. God uses the preacher. God uses sermons. God uses men and women, mature men and women of the faith so that we can also be mature through them. And God this our lesson today uses trials also in life to bring us to maturity. The great preacher Charles Spurgeon says, Trials teach us what we are. They dig up the soil and let us see what we are made of. They just turn up some of the ill weeds on to the surface. Last two week, I think one month ago na yata, ay natapos yung Olympics or any hindi lamang Olympics or any sports event. Palagi tayo dito nagbibigay ng illustration sa pulpit about sports. And alam natin yung mga great men and women ng sports, now especially sa Olympics, meron kasi silang finiture. About an athlete, whatever it is, track and field, swimming, o ano paman, nakuha nila yung kanilang first gold or even first silver, o naandun sila sa podium, tinanggap nila yung kanyang medal, Marami doon is not on their first try sa Olympics. Many of those are in the third or even fourth try 
Yung iba nag-start pa ng mga 16 years old and then of course every 4 years. So hanggang dumating pa yung ika nilang attempt sa Olympics, doon pa lamang sila nakakuha ng gold. And you know what's common in their testimony? The trainings, the trials, the frustration, the discouragement on their first Olympics, even on the second. Yun yung kanilang naging stepping stone that motivates them and strengthen them. Yung resolve nila and conviction nila and discipline and confidence. All because of this trying experience before until finally they got their medal. So, it is easy for us as humans or yung world to accept this truth that we need trials, okay, for us to be strengthened. But at one, when it comes to the trial, yung Christian, when it comes to the Christian's trials, so permitted, so allowed by God, sometimes it's very difficult for us to embrace it, to accept it. Where in fact, we can see that in the recipe, that the recipe for success of all these athletes sa mga sports events, common ang kanilang sagot, they value so much their experiences, these trying experiences that they have. And so, kung ganun sa ang mundo ang tingin nila, that's, that's a good recipe for their success later on, lalo pa tayo in the area of our Christian life and our maturity in our faith. That we ought to value also, and we look at trials also the same way as the unbelieving world look at their trying experience that mold them, motivate them, strengthen them until they reach their fullest potential. Okay? So, ganun din po sana tayo as Christians. Let's look at the trials of Christian life as also a very good recipe for success. To give glory and honor to our master, to our God. First and foremost, we have to understand why Christians have trials. Very basic question. Valid? We ought to entertain. Simply lamang din ang kasagutan. But when it comes to the response, that's the difference. Kung kaya si Peter sinabi niya at napakaganda ng kanyang ginamit na word, Beloved, think it not strange. Okay? Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. The word that has been used is, think it not strange. Do not be surprised. Okay? In other words, expect it. Kasi kung hindi, mo niya, kung hindi ka na nasusurpresa, if you're not surprised, meaning you're expecting it, that's the um, uh, admonition or yung tone ni Apostle Peter. Kasi yung kasunod niya pa, as though some strange thing happened unto you. There may be some strange strange thing happening uh, around us that we are not expecting. Do not, Peter just simply says, do not include trials of life doon sa mga strange thing. Therefore, it ought to be expected. It's normal. If it is expected, if it will not, if it, it will not surprise us, meaning it's normal part of our life. That's the difference. It's very difficult to 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 uh, parang lunukin tong katotohanan na ito because we know that trials are not comfortable. It's not easy. We are all of us are in trials of our life. Okay? But that is the secret right now that the word of God is trying to tell us for us to understand. Alisin natin sila doon sa mga strange things na nangyayari sa ating buhay. Think it not strange. But First and foremost, it's because Christians have trials because we live in a sinful world. Okay? Again, walang tulong sa atin, there's no benefit if we will not accept or believe in this very very uh, 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 factual thing that happened sa history ng buong mundo when Adam and Eve fall short of the glory of God. And in fact, it's in our veins. All of us are sinners. And because we are all sinners, okay, we also cause what? Pain and suffering to others. And the circle continues. People 
hurting people, hurting people, hurting people, and the circle of hurting continues because of the wickedness of the heart of man. We are part of a fallen race. That's the context of Romans 3, 10 to 23. It may be long, but let's read it. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. That alone answers our question. There is no righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues. They have used deceit. The poison of us is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Isang, isang, uh, isang uh, quotation ni Charles Spurgeon, naalala ko, do not, do not so relax or do not so trusting. Maybe right now you think or you believe okay ang heart mo, wala siyang ginagawang masama, wala siyang iniisip na pangit o masama. Maghintay ka lamang, sabi niya, just wait a minute, an hour, a day, a week. Baka hindi na tumagal yung week. Baka hours lamang at saka day. Maya-maya makikita mo, meron na uling niluluto na wickedness ang puso mo. Do not so trusting. That's the context of that quotation. We are not trusting our heart. It's always full of deceit and wickedness. Our thought system is wicked. When we present it, when we measure it, doon sa pamantayan ng Diyos. Kaya ang kanyang summary in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that sin is not yung one time lang naakala natin. It's progressive. Araw-araw po natin yang nakukumit sa atin pong Panginoon. And that is the truth of the matter. And so, we are also partake a performers ng trials ng iba because of the wickedness and the sinfulness of our heart as well the greed inside us we are also sometimes the cause of pain and trials for others why because all have sinned we are all product sinful product of the sin na nagsimula doon kay Adam at kay Eve simpleng katotohanan but i hope and pray that we understand we embrace this truth Kaya na andyan na siya, hindi siya mawawala as long as naandito pa tayong lahat sa lupa. Sin will be in this world, therefore persecutions, trials, and pain will always be caused by us or by others towards us. We live in a crime, we live in a world full of crime, full of turmoil, natural disaster, sickness, and death. Kaya ang sabi sa Hebrews 9.27, Naging resulta ng ating kasalanan, naging resulta ng kasalanan ng tao is death. And uh, this is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And Christians have trials because of the power of none other than our adversary, Satan. Okay? Tayo minsan ng part ng party doon sa pain and trials to others. And also, we have the Bible, what the Bible says, the adversary. In 1 Peter 5.8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It is the illustration of this adversary of Satan nung kanya na pong itinetempt si Job. That is the very good illustration of how ito pong uh, si Satan ay nagkokos ng pain and suffering sa ating mga tao. Look at the very account of Job's life and you will understand. 
Kaya yun ang naging bunga nung, 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 nung death. Sabi sa 1 Corinthians 15:55 to 57, "O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, there will be pain and suffering. Yes, there will be. We will be subjected to the attack of Satan. But the summary of it all, we are already victorious. Okay, we are already victorious with the Lord Jesus Christ." Christians also are in a collision course with the world. Ito naman yung dalawa. Nandito pa rin tayo sa mundo. Na alam natin who is the prince of the world, who is the god of this world, none other than Satan. And we will continuously always be consistently in collision course with the world. So isa to para mabago ating mindset is hindi natin i-expect na tayo po ay tanggap. Kapag yun ang nananais natin, there is a, that's, that's a dangerous proposition for us Christians because the Bible is so clear. From the Lord Jesus Christ Himself and the testimony of the apostles, they separate themselves from the world. And the Lord Jesus Christ Himself warned of this conflict when He says in John, John chapter 15, verses 18 to 20, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have if kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And that is for that reason, history revealed to us the many sufferings and persecutions of Christians before us. Now we understand. Because in the first place, it's not even just revealed by God to us. It's promised. It is promised by God to us. Kasama yun sa pangako ng Panginoon na ating kakaharapin na buhay dito. Kaya nga, when we look at the physical death ng isang Christian, so precious is the death of his saints, the Bible says, It is also a blessing for a true believing Christian. It is not that the, the physical death is not to hurt us, but that's day one of our everlasting joy and peace with the Lord Jesus Christ. So all the persecutions and trials and pain and suffering that we have in this life ends when that physical death also comes. And that's the and that's the biblical reality of it. That's why we rejoice even in death in our physical death. Tumagal ang ating buhay, enjoying it with our loved ones, with our friends, enjoying also the benefits of what this, this world can give to us, is just a bonus for us. Bonus na lamang po yun ng ating Panginoon. But our hope, yung minanais-nais talaga natin, is that one day we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ in all eternity. Many have suffered and died for Christ. We understand now. In in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 36 to 40, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings; yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned; they were sown asunder; were tempted; were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. See. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And this all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. You see, the world, sabi sa verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy. Yung sufferings natin parang in comparison to our final destination, Walang maitatapat yung mundo doon sa glory that we have later on with the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya sabi sa verse 40, God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Better thing for us. Therefore, if that better thing, because these verses in Hebrews that we have just read is also a, a, in, in, in a tone of a prophecy. Kasi patuloy pa rin siyang nangyayari. Not only in the time that this writer wrote this book, 
this uh, this uh, letter to the Hebrew people, but it is a prophecy in the future because it is still happening right now. Yung mga trial, scourging, iba nga lang maari ang form ng mga trials and persecution in our present day, but it is prophesied by the, by the, by the writer of this book. And at the end of it, the summary of it all is God preparing a better place for us. So when we put our heart to that better place, that indicates maturity in our faith. Because hindi na tayo affected noong temporal and temporary trials and persecution na nangyayari sa atin in this life. Because yung mindset natin actually nakatingin na doon sa better place na ipoprovide sa atin ng Panginoon. And that is a sign of maturity for a Christian. Kung ganun ang paninginan ng isang Christian, therefore, makakapamuhay talaga siya in the midst of trials and persecution with pure joy and peace. Because he know that one time, one day, all of this will just come to an end. Trials Therefore, are to embrace. Lagi natin binabanggit yan sa pulpit. It is to be embraced, not to be ignored, not to be rejected, even not a cause of doubt for us to doubt our God. Because He promised it. He has a purpose for it. Isa to sa kanyang mga means and instrument for growth. And so a Christian should embrace it. Kaya binigyan tayo ng mga verses in the Bible to comfort us, to strengthen So that we may have that confidence as well. It is the context of 1 Corinthians 10.13. Lagi na natin binabanggit sa, sa pulpit. There hath no temptation or trials taken you, but such is common unto all men. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you or will not allow you to be tempted above which ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. That's the process. At the end of the day, the promise is there. It will always be what? It will, God will always provide a means or a way for us to escape it. Kaya nga, I mean, the truth of the matter is, we preach here, I preach here every Friday. Naandyan kayo, naglilisten kayo every Friday. Sususunod na araw, Sabado, and then Sunday again, days will pass. Haven't you noticed? Ganong karami ng trials ang lumampas sa buhay mo as Christians. Maybe you, will not, you cannot number it anymore. You cannot count it anymore. But rather count that as blessings. Those experiences brought you in this position right now, in this situation right now, in your mature Christian faith right now. Diba? So pasalamatan natin. Cherish those experiences, knowing there is a promise in the Bible and God proved that His promise is true. Because magkausap pa rin tayong ngayon right now. I'm still preaching to you. You are still listening. You're still a blessing to others. You're still serving God. You're still trusting God. You are still continue, continuing in serving God. You're still waiting for the second coming of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the context also when Paul wrote to the believers in Rome, in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 to 39. He started with the word, For I am persuaded, I am convinced, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor depth, nor height, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God through Christ our Lord, Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, another promise, no amount or anything, nothing can separate us from the love of God. So why Christians have trials? We just need to understand and embrace the reality because it is a product of sin. People hurt us. People is the cause of our trial. We as well are sometimes the cause of it. Christians have trials because we have adversary, the devil. But we are already victorious. Jesus Christ rose again the third day. He is victorious over the grave. Satan asked permission of God when he tempted or tried Job. Walang lalampas na anumang trial o situation sa buhay natin na hindi dumaan doon sa permissive lens ng eyes of our God. So we take comfort doon sa katotohanan na yon. 
Christians are always in a collision with the world because this is not our place. This is not our final home. We are ambassadors. We are foreigners. We are aliens. Our home is there beyond the blue. So, second point why the Christians, yung trials natin are different in comparison to an unbeliever. Okay? Bear in mind, both believers and unbelievers of the Lord Jesus Christ, saved and unsaved, are subjected to this truth. Kasi, common yung sin na nangyari sa lupa. Lahat ng tao sa lupa ay subjected to the trials of life. But in 1 Peter 4.13, our verses says, But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. That's the difference. Dito pa lang, maaisasum up na natin ang difference. We are partakers of the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. And being partakers meaning you are not alone. We are not alone in the journey of it. Even though we think we are alone, you have your immediate family members, your family members in the flesh. You have your family in the faith. Your church who can immediately pray for you when you ask so. And in other also areas of help, you have your brethren, your brethren in the faith. And finally, you have God. Actually, tanggalin pa natin yung dalawa na yon with God alone, it's sufficient. It's enough. Yung mga prophet during those early days, they are comforted by the presence of our God. We do not suffer alone even though we think we are alone. In Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 to 6, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper and I will not fear that man shall do unto. And in verse 6, but read you, ah, sorry. Uh, verse 6, uh, nabasa po natin. You see, the, uh, the verse says, it's not I may, I will, certain. Ang promise ng Panginoon, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So we take, we ought to take comfort, okay? When we are promised by our God Himself, we take it at, at His word. Kung ano po sinabi sa atin ng Panginoon, hindi tayo iniiiwan. Ang puso lang natin ang nagdadaya time to time. And our flesh who is resisting yung mga trials sa ating buhay. Okay? But we take comfort to the very promise of our God that He will never leave us nor for, uh, forsake us. And the verse says, we, are, we become partakers of Christ's suffering. We're talking of the difference. Here, we, 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 we understand that in, in, the, in the suffering itself, kaisa tayo na kung yung Panginoong Jesus natin mismo, He Himself suffered for us, okay, and then his declaration is that we become partakers of his suffering as well. We become partakers of Christ's suffering. But the, uh, the Bible says, the verse says, but rejoice, okay, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. So for Christian, for a Christian, life's trials and sufferings are privileges, okay? So now, May bago tayo ngayong i-input sa ating mindset and our thought system. It is now a privilege. If we are in trial, it confirms, kaisa ako ngayon, I am a partaker with our Lord Jesus Christ Himself. We are, we are now in the same position with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, kung kaisa tayo doon, kaisa din tayo doon sa glory. It confirms the equation it validates the equation. Partakers in the suffering of Jesus Christ here on earth equals partakers of the Lord Jesus Christ also in the glory later on doon sa ating kalangitan. Privilege. Therefore, ang ating pong claim when we are subjected to the trials of life. In John 15, 18 to 19, sabi na natin kanina, nabasa natin yan, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Let me quote Pastor George Spurgeon as he says, The good man has his enemies. He would not be like his Lord if he had not. You see, 
Diba? Ang ating gusto sa atin ng Panginoon is to be conformed with the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya sabi din ni Pastor Spurgeon, he would not be like his Lord if he had not, if he had not enemies. If we were without enemies, we might fear that we were not the friends of God. That's the end result. If we are because if we are friend of the world, then we might be an enemy of God. For friendship of the world is enmity to God. The same from from the mouth of Apostle James, you adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So there's the danger. So that's a dangerous proposition or expectation on our part. If we want to be friend with the world, that's the opposite. The opposite is, are we friend of the world? That is therefore an enemy of our God, or are we friend of our God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore we become enemy of the world. And the world will reject us, and the world also will hate us because we are a friend of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we can find joy even in these trying times, in difficult situation of our life. Kaya nga sabi natin, it's not that, think, I think it's not strange. The, the, the teaching for us is, the teaching to us is the right response. There's only one response to every trial of life. And that is to continuously be rejoicing. Why? Because of the impact of that testimony. It happened in the life of Paul and Silas that lead to the salvation of the Philippian jailer in Acts 16.25 to 32. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in, the, in his house. They sing hymns, they sing praises, son to God, in the midst of their persecutions and their trials, being in a prison cell, and the verses, all the other prisoners, Heard them. At ngayon nung nabuksan na yung prison guard, naandoon pa rin yung mga other criminals. Hindi sila nagtakbuhan, hindi sila tumakas. They, didn't, uh, they did not uh, uh, leave the place. Sabi ng verse is, we are all here. That indicates, okay, I do believe that even itong mga prisoners na ito got saved. Knowing Paul, not only singing hymns and praising God, I do believe he is preaching at that time. Hindi titigil si Paul knowing of the character of this man. He will continuously share and be a witness to the other prisoners. He took that opportunity in the midst of the trial. At hindi lamang yung mga kapwa niya, mga prisoner noon ang naligtas. And finally, even the Philippian jailer. Tremendous, amazing impact when we choose the right response in our trials. Expressing joy, trusting God, embracing it, succumbing, submitting to the process of God. It matures us. Not only that, it also bless, blesses other people when we have that right response. It's God's design in our difficulties. There is God's design in our difficulties. We just need to wait and wait and trust God until He revealed it to us. Because the summary of that's the, that design is perfect, it's good. That's the context of Romans 8, 28 to 29. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. 
And after our trials will come victory and glory. You see, the right response, meron din tayo ngayong tamang anticipation. We are worthy to anticipate to that glory and victory if we respond right, properly, doon sa mga trials natin. And that is in Romans 8, 17 to 18. And if children, then ears, ears of God, and joint ears with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It cannot be compared. No point of comparison. Do yung glory, the suffering, embrace it, partakers of the Lord Jesus Christ in the suffering, in this temporal life, which will come to an end, which will come to pass. But look, we will also be partaker of that glory, which in the first place cannot be compared to everything that we are experiencing in this temporal life. Why Christians have trials? Because of our sins, because of the adversary, the devil. We are in a collision course with the world. It's not our per permanent and final place. Why the Christians' trials are different? Because we are partakers of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not only an information revealed to us, but a promise of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. A prophecy that is being fulfilled in the life of every Christian. That I have suffered first, and so you, as my followers, will also have some suffering in your lifetime. And how mature Christians react to their trials is our third point. In 1 Peter 4.14, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are Ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part, his evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. The verse says, happy are ye. Happy even when reproach. Because we know that God is with us in those trials. That's the difference. Without, don't say some person without hope, without Jesus Christ. We ourselves, we know that we are not alone. We have the Lord Jesus Christ with us. And by the way, God understands the pain. He experienced it. He's been through it in Hebrews 4, 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So Christians oftentimes may have financial trials. Many times we make poor decisions because of these trials. Sometimes these financial conditions are totally out of our hands. But also Philippian, uh, uh, financial trials teach us to be more sensitive in caring for others and to give more, even more, even in our financial distress. Philippians 4, chapter 10, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 10, 10 to 17, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in the speck of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both now how to be abased, and I know how to abound everywhere. And in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. So see, that's a challenge for Christians. When we are in financial trial, that's the opportunity to give more. That's the difference. That's the difference. And that is where the power of God will be revealed to us. We can experience that power of God delivering us from this kind of situation. Ganito ang sitwasyon ng mga manao ng mga mana ng pala at mga simbahan. They are even more gracious in giving in their financial distress. And God bless them tremendously. God bless them tremendously. Christians may have trials concerning health. The songwriter Fanny Crosby was blind all throughout her life, but she's the one who wrote the song, Blessed Assurance, Rescue the Perishing, amongst others. 
The poet Annie Johnson Plint suffered from arthritis and was almost unable to walk. He write the song, he give it more grace. Health problems often teach us to sympathize, pray, then appreciate God's sufficient, sufficient grace, even in the midst of our illnesses. At yung mga nakakaranas noon, nagiging, nagkakaroon tayo ng, ng heart of sympathy. One, first is by praying for them, and second is in other means of help na pwede nating ibigay sa kanila. The context of physical health issues or crisis can be found in the life of Apostle Paul and the right response that he has. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan be buffet to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it may depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Opportunity once again to prove at makita natin yung hand of God delivering us in our physical trials, illnesses, health crisis. Hindi ibig sabihin no, na mawawala palagi ang ating mga karamdaman. There may be times that that's the very uh, mean para mabawian na tayo ng buhay. But like that's what we have read, the response, doon tayo ngayon nagkakaroon ng pagkakaiba-iba, yung ating response. Paul chose to give glory and thanksgiving to God because he know that the grace of God is sufficient while he is in his health trials and crisis at that time. Christians may have emotional problems. Many find help from Christian counselors or the tempo, yung mga, uh, mga gagaling mag-advise, sila Dr. Phil, po, at saka yung mga nilalapitan ng mga psychologist. But you know, the Bible is enough. The Word of God is enough to comfort us in our emotional distress or crisis or trials as well. Emotional problems teach us to lean on Jesus and he seek His peace. And seek His peace. His face and His peace. Ito nagtuturo sa atin then time to time to kneel in our prayers. But the Bible says in Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Emotional trials, distress, bago pa tayo tumakbo doon sa mga human means and method or solution, counselors, why not lean, kneel first in prayer? Read your Bible, talk to God, pour your heart to Him because He is the God of peace. No amount of trial in this life is impossible for God, for our God to, to answer or to settle or to make some solutions na ating kinakaharap. Hindi lahat noong gusto nating asagot ay ibibigay ng Panginoon. But what He promised is His grace is sufficient. His peace and His joy will always be in our heart even in the midst of all those trials. That's the, that's the difference sa Christian view against doon sa world view when it comes to trials. So why Christians have trials? Sin, Satan, and of course, we are in collision course with this world. Why Christians' trials are different? We do not suffer alone. We have God on our side, even though we think we are alone. And by the way, it is the Lord Jesus Christ who suffered first. We are partakers in His suffering so that we are also partakers of the glory which will be revealed in us later on. And we can find joy even in the, in the midst of trials just like Paul and Silas. It is God's design in our difficulties and be excited. There will always be victory. Yun ang hintayin natin and the impact of that victory to others, especially to fellow brethren. Kapag lumampas na yung trial na ating kinakaharap. And we can have that testimony of the power and the might of our God in delivering us. And how are we going to react? 
in these trials? Happy are ye. Okay? Happy are ye. Huwag na tayong humanap ng ibang response. Magalak tayo. That confirms we are of God. We may have some financial crisis, but God is our provider. Sa health natin, God's grace is sufficient. Bonus na lang kung pagalingin tayo ng Panginoon. But the promise is God's grace and God's peace and God's joy even in our emotional distress. So are your trials today, my, uh, my brothers, my sisters, making you better and better, mature and mature in your faith? Do you understand now that it is the design of God for Christian growth? There's benefit. It's a privilege to experience this. To prove and to, to, to be a witness of God's power and might in delivering us, giving us joy and peace in the midst of many trials of life. And it is a design of God for our maturity. How do you look at it? The Bible says, the Bible says look to Jesus in trials. He understands and He cares. And finally, our load is so heavy. We are so burdened right now. Again, the remedy is the same. Turn to God, turn to Jesus Christ in Matthew 11, 28 to 30 as we end. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am weak and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is life. If our spirit is strong, peaceful, joyful, no amount of Physical pain can undermine that. Talo po ng isang masaya, malakas na espiritu ang lahat ng mga dinaranas ng physical body natin. Our emotions, everything, all the crisis of life. We can see those testimonies in the Christians, in the life of the Christians before us, Paul and Silas inside the prison, yet singing, praising God, giving glory to God, witnessing to people. And may we have the same peace and joy in our heart, even in the midst of the very difficult trials of life, knowing that it is God's instrument as well for our maturity. Let us all pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for such a wonderful encouragement, motivation, O oh God, coming from your word. May this be the day that all of us as brothers and sisters in the faith, professing Christians, children of God, those whom you saved, may we have this mindset today. Trials are part of our life. It will be on a day-to-day -day basis. Darating po siya darating. The Bible says from the book of First Peter, Think it not strange. Expect it. Embrace it. Do not treat it as something as so strange. Kakaiba. No, it is a normal thing. We ought to embrace it in our Christian life. And whilst doing so, we understand it is also one of God's instrument for our growth. It is a result of the sinfulness of men. We cause pain and trials to others as others do so towards us as well. We have our adversity, adversity, Satan, like a roaring lion, looking for his next victim. We are in a collision course with this world because our final place, our final home is there beyond the blue with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are alien strangers of this world. Our trials are different because it confirms that we are of God. It is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who suffer first. As we are partakers of Him in these trials and suffering in this temporal world, rejoice, be happy, because we are also partakers of that glory which will be revealed in us in all eternity. So how will we respond? The Bible says, happy are we. We respond positively because we embrace it. We know that it's part of our life. We take it as an opportunity to give glory to God, 
and also to be a beautiful witness to others as we see their life, as we see their, as we as as they will see our lives, our positive response, good response to these trials of life, that will throw a question that will have a question lingering in their heart. What is that source of joy and hope and peace to that Christian? I want that peace and joy also in my life. And there's only one way wherein they can fully understand the resource, the source of it. It is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. An opportunity for us as well to be a witness, to share them the true source of that joy and peace. Like just like the message of the song, the one who can fill the void in a man's heart. And that's none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, once again for speaking to us. May you save souls today. Once again to our friends, if you're not yet saved, repent of your sin. Believe that you have wronged God. And the penalty of your sin is that damnation in hell. But you can have eternal life with the Lord Jesus Christ only if you believe and trust Him by faith as your one and only Lord and Savior. He's the one who can cleanse you of all your sins so that you can be accepted, reconciled once again with our God. Make that decision today. And the Bible says, from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved. And to our brethren, you may have a big trial in your life right now, take comfort, be happy, rejoice, for you know that you are not alone. You have your family members, you have your brethren in the faith, and, for, and lastly, which is enough, you have the Lord Jesus Christ who says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Thank you once again, Father. May you be glorified in our midst. This we ask and pray in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you once again for listening. Sana po ay na-blessed po kayo muli ng preaching of the Word of God. Please continue to wait for the recorded sermon sa aming pong website. Regularly po siya na-update. May you have a blessed week today. Once again, kayo po sana ay na-bless at nahamon ang mga kapatiran sa araw po na ito. See you again next week as we will wrap up this uh, series sa atin pong maturity sa next week and later on we will have our missions emphasis month also please pray for that and this coming december yun din na pong aming christmas cantata but before yung ating christmas cantata meron pa rin tayo pong isang series entitled the i am the eight i am's na binanggit ng ating panginoong jesus confirming who he is he who he was who he is and who he will be and that is our series entitled I Am. Once again, thank you very much for listening. God bless you all.